Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon we're playing a deck built around Platinum Angel, one of the new anthology cards, a 7 mana artifact creature angel that's a 4-4 flyer that says you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. So some decks really struggle to deal with Platinum Angel and therefore we basically win the game on the spot if we can resolve it. Other decks can deal with it pretty easily. But uh, we're only playing one copy of Platinum Angel in the main deck. We're also playing the full playset of Karn, the Great Creator, which is one of the centerpieces of the deck. So we can potentially search up an additional copy of Platinum Angel in the sideboard. And we have multiple ways of potentially protecting the Platinum Angel or potentially making multiple copies with our Helm of the Host. So let's take a look at our entire deck, starting out with some of our early plays. We've got a full playset of Border Weatherlight, because outside of the four copies of Border Weatherlight and the four copies of Shatter the Sky, every single non-land card in the main deck counts as historic, meaning it's either a saga, an artifact, or a legendary, can be a legendary creature or planeswalker. So Border Weatherlight gives us a nice bit of card selection. And then we've got four copies of Birth, which lets us search up an extra basic land, so helps us hit our land drops, then also makes an 0-4 wall that can help us protect our planeswalkers and our life total and then on the third chapter we also gain two lives so just a nice way to kind of smooth out our draws and then we also have the full play set of Mindstone, since we are ramping into some expensive cards, so we don't mind the artifact ramp from Mindstone, and we can later also sacrifice it to draw a card if we're flooding out a bit. And then to complement Mindstone, we also have the full play set of Powerstone Shard as more artifact ramp, which makes one colorless mana for each artifact we control named Powerstone Shard. So if we only draw a single copy of Powerstone Shard, it's not that exciting, but if we draw more than one, it turns into a very appealing ramp option, especially for a mono white tech. Then at 4 mana we've got our full playset of Karn the Great Creator, which is a real centerpiece of the deck, as we can minus 2 and search any artifact out of our sideboard. The passive ability to shut down opposing artifacts can also come up, and then the plus we will also use every now and then, but the main play pattern with Karn is just to minus twice in a row if possible, and get as much value as possible out of the sideboard, and then later we could also use a plus 1, especially in combination with Parhelion, to potentially close out the game after we search it up out of the sideboard. And then uh, we've got the full place of the Shatter the Sky, because we do need some removal against creature decks. And then two copies of Shalai Voice of Plenty, which is a good way to protect our Platinum Angel, giving other Planeswalkers, creatures and ourselves Hexproof for as long as Shalai is in play. So then the opponent can't easily get rid of our Platinum Angel, and they will have to go through Shalai first. And then it's also an Angel that can help us uh, close out the game. And we've got some Angel synergies with a Lyra Dawnbringer as a 5-mana five 5-5 five five flying, first-striking, life-linking Angel, giving other Angels we control plus 1 plus 1 and lifelink. And it's also legendary, so we can find it with our Border Weatherlight. And then two copies of Elspeth Conquers Death, which has also been one of the MVPs in the deck, as we can use it as removal, exiling target permanent and opponent controls with converted mana cost 3 or greater. Then on the second chapter we make their non-creature spells more expensive, and on the final chapter we get to return a creature or planeswalker from our graveyard to the battlefield, with an extra plus one plus one counter or loyalty counter, so it can also help us get back Karn, which then can find even more cards out of the sideboard, or we can get back an angel that lost its wings. And then topping off our curve, we have two copies of Ugin, the Ineffable, which can function as removal as well, makes our colorless spells too less to cast, which is great in combination with our Karn the Great Creator and the various artifacts we could search up out of the sideboard, which can end up being pretty expensive. And then the plus one can also generate a bunch of 2-2 spirit tokens to give us a bit more board presence. And then last but not least, besides our Platinum Angel, we also have Sephara Sky's Blade as a 7 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, flying, lifelinking, legendary angel. We're not going to use the alternate casting cost all that much, but it does give other creatures we control with flying indestructible, so it's another way of potentially protecting our Platinum Angel from uh, sweepers or other destroy effects. And uh, especially if we can start making multiple copies of Sephara with our Helm of the Host, which I've referenced a few times now already, we can really lock up the game. So let's take a look at our entire sideboard here that we can potentially search up with Karn. If we need some cheap removal, we have two copies of Glass Casket, which also comes in handy. We've got a Shadow Spear if we need to gain some life with our non-lifelinking angels, or if we need to remove Indestructible or Hexproof, which can also come up. We've got a Gravedigger's Cage as Graveyard Hates. Mirror Shield can also be a way of protecting our Platinum Angel, giving it Hexproof. We've got two copies of Sorcerer's Spyglass to shut down various activated abilities, mostly Planeswalkers. 
we have a Crucible Worlds, which we can combine with our various lands, which I'll go over in a second. We've got Transmogrifying Wand, which we can use to turn opposing creatures into a 2-4 Ox. We've got Helm of the Host, which is great at copying our Platinum Angel and other various legendary creatures, since those won't count as legendary, so we can have more than one in play at the same time. We've got a Godfarer Statue, which can be great if ramped into, making the opponent's spells too more expensive. And then we've got Immortal Sun against Planeswalker heavy decks. It does also shut down our own Planeswalkers, which we don't really want. But every now and then you might be up against a deck that has even more Planeswalkers than we do. And then this can be a nice tool. We've got a Meteor Golem, which can destroy target to non-land permanent an opponent controls. A nice versatile removal spell, also pretty fun in combination with Helm of the Host. Then we've got our extra Platinum Angel, in case we didn't draw the one in our deck. And we want to lock up the game against certain decks. And then last but not least, Parhelion, and number two, as an 8-mana 5-5 five five legendary vehicle with flying first rank and vigilance, and when Parhelion 2 attacks, we get to make two 4-4 four four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance that are attacking as well. Crew cost is 4, but a neat little trick in this deck is that we can use Karn Great Creator's plus ability to turn Parhelion into an 8-8 eight eight creature, and then uh, it will be crewed that way, and then if it attacks it will still make those two angel tokens. And then looking at our mana base, we do need lots of planes to search up with our birth as well. So we've got 12 basic planes, two copies of Castle Ardenvale to potentially make some tokens in the late game, and then a full playset of Secluded Step as one of the new cycling lands, which gives us a nice way to potentially draw an extra card in the late game if we don't need the land. And we also have the full playset of Zelfran Void, which comes into play untapped and lets us cry one, so it gives us a nice bit of card selection as well. So combined with the Secluded Step, our deck has some pretty nice tools built into the mana base to give us a better late game and then to combine with our crucible worlds we have two copies of blast zone to potentially destroy problematic permanents and two copies of ghost quarter to destroy opposing problematic lands and getting to loop those with crucible can also be a powerful late game so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does all right we're on the draw this hand is missing any form of ramp, and we don't have a Shatter the Sky to potentially catch us back up. So, in standard you might be able to keep this hand, in historic I think this is just a bit too slow. Alright, this is better. Get rid of a Blast Zone, and then we've got some selection with Border Weatherlight on 2, Shard on 3, and Conqueror's Death on 4. Don't think I need to play the Void quite yet, since I don't know yet if I want to keep lands or bottom lands. So, facing a Field of the Dead deck, so this Ghost Quarter is going to come in handy. And take the Mind Stone. Flying creatures are a good way to handle Field of the Dead, especially Lyra Dawnbringer. So, now I guess I could play the Void. And another Border Weatherlight. So this turn I play Shard, next turn I can play Mind Stone. Yeah, I'll keep a Border Weatherlight. At this point I'm also actively digging for Karn. Which can find Crucible to combo with our Ghost Quarter. Opponent maybe on the Sultai version with Yarok, which we can conquer. Let's board first. Not in a hurry to play Shalai in case I need to play Sweeper first. Well, that's uh, unfortunate. And then do I want to sack the Mind Stone, or do I keep it? There's Yarok. Think I'm okay keeping the Mind Stone in play for now. So I'll need double white for Conqueror's Death.
so probably okay using Ghost Quarter on Field of the Dead now. Before they get any zombies. And then play Shalai. And then I can probably end up cycling the secluded step. I guess I can do it now. Alright, so not gonna get anything back from the third chapter of Conqueror's Death, most likely. And then I'll have to sag these Mind Stones to hopefully draw me into a Karn. Cavalier of Thorns. Finds Temple, Mills, couple Murder Striders and Risen Reef. So let's sack a Mind Stone. Birth. Don't want to play that first to thin out the deck. I guess I don't have anything scrying to the bottom. But then I might be short of mana after I draw a card with Mind Stone. So let's just uh, draw a card with Mind Stone first here. Right, there's Ugin, although I'm still one mana short. Could play Birth, could start taking a Blast Zone or make a token with Castle. Don't mind making a token with Castle here to chum the Cavalier, prevent as much damage as possible. And then Ugin lets me play Mind Stone for free. And I can either sack Mind Stone or play Birth. Guess we'll play Birth. Not sure what my opponent's holding. Could be a Casualties of War, which would be pretty bad for me, although I guess Shalai does give her other permanent sex proof. At least my Planeswalkers. Could attack for three, I'm happy just playing defense, I think. Ah, they do have another Murder Strider to take out Shalai. Well, now casualties would be bad. Instead it's gonna be Disfigure taking out my token, so they can finish off Ugin. And there's another Field of the Dead, so... Yeah, we're under a bit of pressure here now. Do have a lot of mana thanks to the Power Stone Shards. I guess I will birth before uh, drawing with Mind Stone. Well, I did not mean to tap my planes there, because I needed it for uh, potentially using castle. I would have happily tapped my shard there, but I guess it worked out. Can conquer death cavalier, which exiles it, so they don't even get a card back from the graveyard. And we'll eventually get back my Ugin. So that was a fantastic top deck. Still on the lookout for Karn to shut down the second field of the dead. Second Cavalier. Can they find another field? It's going to be Arch instead, which is also quite good here. 
more zombies. And I am out of mind stones to sacrifice, so now I'm just relying on castle, maybe blast zone. Another disfigure finishes off my wall. Just a planes to draw. Don't really want to put a blast zone on three, because then I lose my shards too. I guess I can bluff settle the wreckage. Don't think holding the land's gonna punish me too badly. I'll probably just chum the cavalier using the castle token, maybe take a blast zone a bunch. A risen reef, pretty good too. Alright, so we'll make a token here. Take four. And then how much do I take a blast zone? Opponent could be playing Agent of Treachery all the way up to seven. Could just go with five in case I find another Yarok. Um, how much mana do I have left? Six, I could put three counters on it. Or I could put two counters on it so I have one at three in case I need to blob the Rejuvenators, the Risen Reef. Yeah, I guess we'll just put it up to three now. Even if that means potentially losing my Power Stone Shards. So we do get... Ugin back, I think. Alright, there's Karn, so I'll happily chump with uh, Spirits. And then I have a chump blocker from Castle, and maybe Blast Zone that we can activate. And then Karn's gonna have to do some heavy lifting. I'll let Ugin. So let's say I blow a Blast Zone and make a token. Then they only have the Zombies Cavalier left, three blockers, one, two, three. Then Ugin would survive. I guess that's worth it. Although Power Stone Shard is pretty nice with Karn, since I can get some expensive cards with it. Saving Ugin might be worth it though. So I guess I want to trade for a zombie chump and block a zombie. That was not wise. And then the Ugin discount is also pretty good with Karn. So this can only plus. More Karns. So I can play Karn, get Crucible. And then I'm not sure what to destroy, or I could just get a Platinum Angel first. Got a lot of options. True can never be I'm thinking Crucible first, and then deal with the Arch before we deal with the Fields. And I can still make a token with Castle. And then I probably need to blow it up before they untap. Although they will get another zombie potentially if they have more basics left. Alright. So hopefully I'm not dead on board. And then we can start working on Field of the Dead, hopefully get another Karn activation along the way. Which can find Platinum Angel and ways to protect the Platinum Angel. We'll refine second fields. Alright. This is definitely getting out of hand.
Another land, two more zombies. So my priority is probably just getting an angel so we make sure we don't lose to the zombies in play. So keeping Karn alive is going to be priority number one, although we do have another Karn here underneath the spirits. In case they kill the one in play. Opponent sending everything but one zombie at Ugin. So let's say I make a token here. Yeah, there's no way to save Ugin. So then I might as well save Karn. And it's probably okay to trade here. And then keep my other things alive. Blast some makes more zombies. So yeah, gotta get the Platinum Angel here just to stay alive. And then I probably want to Ghost Quarter their Blast Zone since they could technically get it up to 7. And I don't really care about a horde of zombies as long as we have Angel, although Uro is also pretty annoying. This will not I will not stop. Let's get Angel. Ghost Quarter the Blast Zone, which could also go after a Crucible for what it's worth. Opponents out of basics, good to know. Well, now I just need the Angel to survive. Next turn, Karn could get a way to give it Hexproof, or a way to maybe duplicate it with our uh, Helm of the Hosts. So I don't want to risk blocking the Angel on a zombie in case they have another Disfigure. Is there any reason for me to block at this point? I don't think so. I think I keep my chumpers to maybe protect the planeswalker later. Not that it matters a whole lot. Ah, uh, did they top deck removal? They did. Murder Strider, my angel. Alright, that's too bad. Well, I needed one more turn to get the uh, mirror shield to protect our angel or get the uh, helm of the host, so needed to fade there, and they did see a couple Murder Striders already. Too bad, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Yeah, this seems okay. Birth to ensure we keep hitting our land drops. Shatter has uh, some good removal, and then board a Waterline to find more action. Facing the life gain deck, which can have a hard time beating Platinum Angel, so that's kind of our game plan. They do have the Dream Start, Soul Warden into a Jani. Heliots can be kind of difficult to deal with, so that's a card we don't want to see early on. Blast Zone can also be pretty effective. I don't really mind showing them, because I would rather save the Scry for later without messing it up with Birth. But yeah, the Blast Zone can get rid of multiple creatures at once, including Soul Wardens and Sarah's Ascendants. It's going to be a Resplendent Angel. So we can definitely afford to jump with the wall since we have a Shatter the Sky incoming. For now we'll just Birth again and then play Void afterwards. Then need Power Stone Shard, I don't think. It would be a turn 5 play, but doesn't really speed up the Ugin in any capacity. And if we kept the card on top, they would maybe also be more suspicious of a Shatter the Sky. Ooh, wow, Thalia? That's rough. So now we won't be able to Shatter yet. And there's the Saracenance. 
So I guess I'll still chump since we get another wall here. But I could be dead before I get to cast my uh, Shatter, which would be unfortunate. I guess we can cast a 3 mana Birth. Yeah, Thalia is definitely not a card we want to see when playing this deck. If we get to chum the Pride Mates, we're technically still okay. And it's not like we're playing against a burn deck that can easily deal those last points of damage. And once Thalia is gone, we can cast Ugin. Just uh, shatter the sky, opponent gets to draw cards. But hopefully they can't swarm us. And Ugin and Karn can stabilize us. Alright, Saracen and opponent up to 29. Don't really mind aggressively minusing Ugin since we have another one lined up. Could also use a Blast Zone, but I think I would rather keep my lands. Could play Karn minus get Casket, maybe that's the play. And then our opponent will be tempted to attack Karn instead of my life total. And with Board Weatherlight and more Ugins, we shouldn't run out of action anytime soon. I guess that's reasonable. Could technically also casket Daxos, hoping they can gain life so that the Sentence doesn't actually kill anything. Although that is risky if they figure out a way to gain life. But then I would maybe get to minus again with Karn, finding another casket, which would be pretty strong. So I guess I'll casket Daxos here. Bit of a gamble. Linden, for example, could let them attack in one life up to 30, and then this would become a 6-6. Bishop of Wings, it's not too bad, and a Vanguard. Alright, Vanguard does a 2 with three creatures in play. Opponent goes face, down to 3. This only works on colorless spells, so Casket still costs 2 mana. So I probably want to Blast Zone, and then get another Casket. To clean up the bishop. Seems fine. Ascendant's not an angel, so they don't get a spirit token. And now we still have our Karn in play. Plenty more removal coming up. Alright, more one drops. Probably Ugin just wants to plus. And then I can play Power Stone Shard for one mana. Sure. And then I can plus on the Power Stone Shard to have an extra blocker. Pride Mates should be manageable. Alright, so what does Karn do? Could just get a Platinum Angel, which they might not be able to beat. Or I could plus first before getting anything. Ugin can minus on the Pride Mate or can just plus and chump, which is also fine. Start by casting Border Weather Light and see what we find. An extra Shalai, Mind Stone I can play for free. Let's get a Mind Stone. 
think I just keep plussing with Ugin. Play Shalai, and then I'm not gonna minus Karn yet in the hopes of keeping Karn in play. I think I'll play this since if I minus with Karn I might need a lot of mana. And we'll pass. And then next turn I could minus, get Platinum Angel, and still have an active Karn to get more stuff. Alright, there's Heliots. Now, Ponon does have enough Devotion for Heliots, so I could also get Shadow Spear, remove Indestructible, and then minus with Ugin to kill Heliots. But if I just get Platinum Angel, I don't know how they beat that. So we've got options, which is always a good thing. It is kind of flavorful to kill Heliod with Shadow Spears, so... Yeah, let's do it. And then we can minus... Not a blast zone, can probably sack Mindstone now. And then I can still equip the spear. Alright, and our opponent packs it in. Sweet. Achievement unlocked. Kill Heliod with Shadow Spear. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. We have double white, we've got some artifact ramp into a shatter, into an Ugin. Fine playing this out on turn one. And then I wouldn't mind an extra land along the way. Red-green, turn to Burning Tree, all right. The Gruul matchup can be tough. Questing Beast especially is pretty scary when playing with Ugin. But they've got a slow start. And playing around Embercleave is also pretty important, so sometimes we are forced to shatter even if it might not appear like it's necessary. Gonna see a 3-3 Spellbreaker. I think I'm fine casting the Shatter now. I could wait, but then if they Ember Cleave me next turn, I'm gonna take a lot of damage. Could Ugin Minus, that's the other approach. And then if they Questing Beast, I still have the Shatter. But I would rather not let them play Questing Beast with Ugin in play, if you get what I'm saying. So, let's just Shatter. And they don't get to draw any cards, which is nice too. And that's perfect, so now they play Questing Beast, I take 4, but now I can Ugin Minus on Beasts, which works out way better. Now of course they can have any number of other haste creatures to kill Ugin, but at least we're not letting them kill it for free. Zurta Goblin, perhaps. Just a stomp. That's fine. Well, the Gruul deck doesn't have an easy time killing a 7-7, so... Playing Sephara here is pretty good. If they cleave me, I'm taking 10, so I'm technically not dead. Or I can just Ugin Minus, which is maybe safer. Especially if I need to cast a Shatter, I don't want to have to cast it with Sephara in play. Pelt Collector, probably not threatening enough for me to pull the trigger on Shatter, so let's just uh, plus. Play Sephara. 
They could have Domri's Ambush stuck in hand, which is one way of potentially killing a 7-7, but not with a 1-1 Pelt Collector. They could also have Ember Cleave that they weren't able to cast yet. Those are the two cards that they're likely gonna have stuck in hand against us. And there's a Zurta. So Cleave wouldn't kill Sephara if I block. So can it be anything else? Let's say I block, take two, even if they like ambush second main, I'm still safe. So I think this is safe enough. So they're gonna cleave the Zurta. But uh, yeah. It's not quite enough. And Shalai can protect Sephara as well, as well as being an indestructible angel. So that seals the deal. Alright, sweet. The Gruul deck, definitely one of the more popular historic decks out there, so being able to beat it is pretty important. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and uh, this hand has a lot of mana. Doesn't really have a payoff card yet, but hopefully we can draw one. So if we find a Karn, we're in great shape. If we find one of our more expensive Angels, we're good to go. Turn one Mountain, opponent holding a one mana spell it looks like. At the very least we can sink mana into the castle if we don't draw anything else. Turn two, Kiln Fiends. Alright, this card can be very scary, but we do have an O4 wall to protect us already. Don't think I wanna shatter right away here, but uh, for now we can just play Power Stone Shard. And then next turn I could potentially make a lot of mana with the second shard. Make sure not to time the first one before uh, playing the second copy. Alright, so the Skill Fiend already up to 7 power. And make that 10. Dust Trample. So I could soak up 4 damage essentially. Not sure here whether I'm supposed to. I guess I will. And we picked up an Ugin, which could be pretty good. So now I guess I feel fine just casting the Shatter. So now I can afford to tap the Power Stone Shard before playing the second one. And this one will make two mana. And then next turn we'll have an Ugin, which can maybe also kill a creature. Although Minusing will put it in burn range. Although Gutter Snipe's a pretty scary card, so I think I will be fine uh, killing it. Maximize Velocity to give it haste. Hits us for three. <laughs> More Power Stone Shards. If we play Ugin first, it's gonna only cost one mana to play it, so... Let's see here. Any way I can, like, minus Ugin and make a token. So, play land for the turn. So I can play Ugin. Use Mind Stone, and then this can tap for Power Stone Shards. And then I can still activate my cast Arden Veil. And we'll minus on the Gutter Snipe. And then I could also next turn sack the Mind Stone to find more action. Second Gutter Snipe, alright. If the plan is maximize velocity jumpstart, we can jump with our token to protect Ugin. And also to protect our life total here, so... They will go face. Alright, so... I guess I'll start by plussing. Probably won't need the Ghost Quarter. Uh, 
Well, that's a pretty good draw. And I can still make a token with castle. Now I could easily die here, go to snipe and play, opponent's got a lot of cards in hand. So we'll see what happens. Steals my spirit token. Fury down to five. So if they have a burn spell like a lightning strike, I could be dead. And yep, there it is. Well, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Don't have double white yet, but uh, shouldn't be too much of an issue. And being on the play definitely helps when uh, ramping out these planeswalkers. And I guess I can just play this one tapped for now. Could use Void to maybe improve my uh, hit rate on board the weather lights, but I think I would rather save it for later. And then I can take a second Power Stone Shard to go with the first one, so that's also where Border Weather Lights comes in handy. Didn't think I need Mind Stone. So facing Asper Control can be a tough matchup. So my next play probably getting countered. Could just play another Power Stone Shards and they might counter it. Or I can bait with the Karn if I value the mana more. Don't think I need the mana all that much. So let's start here. And then I can play a Karn. Let's cry first, find more action now that we have all the mana. Board of Weatherlight should be good in theory. Alright, Karn resolved. I'm surprised. Probably get Sorcerer's Spyglass first. Don't really want to get Immortal Sun when we're holding all these Planeswalkers ourselves. Spyglass can shut down a variety of uh, Planeswalkers, maybe starting with Teferi Time Raveler. Although, if they had Teferi they might have played it here. We'll see. Can take a look at their hand first. Oath of Kaya finishes off Karn. So we can board the weather lights and then still play Ugin and play a Spyglass for free. Um. Let's get a shall I? Could have also, I guess, instead of Border Water Lights, played a two mana Karn. Opponent's got a bunch of removal in hand, so that's not too bad. So, do we name Big Teferi? Do we name Small Teferi? Probably still name Small Teferi, which they're more likely to have four copies. And then we can just plus for now. And what do we want to search up with Karn at this point? Can get rid of Shalai. I could minus on the Bell Haunts, because otherwise, let's see, Legion's End. I think this token would get exiled alongside other tokens if they Legion's End. Because it's not an actual, like, morph creature, which I think would be an exception to this rule. It's just a spirit token. I think I'm okay minusing on the bell haunts. And we have eight mana total. Could just get a statue, which seems these. And our opponent's just gonna concede to the statue here, making all their spells too more expensive. 
All right, sweet. So the ramp provided by Power Stone Shard, and then our opponent having a handful of spot removal, which is not great against us. Definitely uh, worked out in this game. So that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.